like there's been this divide in the art world between people who go to galleries, who go to museums, and people who don't. And I think you could argue that most people don't. <laughs> most people don't go to art galleries, most people don't go to art museums. And it's a shame because art should be for everyone. But I feel like there are these conscious, subconscious, economic, cultural walls between these art spaces and most of the public. Um, and street art obviously breaks down those barriers. I mean, it's in the public space. You know, it's on your walk to the L, it's on your walk to work, on your walk to school. If I could do anything to be able to humanize someone else in a way that you see it and then you can resonate with that and hopefully in return make you like maybe a little bit better, that is like, if I could do that, I feel like that is like big change. Obviously, this is literally just like paper with we paste on like a boarded up building that I'm like hoping to do something that's like revolutionary. But at the same time, I'm like, it's small change that ignites like big change, you know? I just like, honestly, I want it to provoke thought. I want you to like see it and I want you to think of it. You know, whether it's something that's like very specific, like with a piece that I made about Remy, the black trans woman that had passed, just to like put thought into any of that and to like realize that like black trans women are like disproportionately hurt and like often not protected and like their life expectancy is like really short and that's like super messed up. And I feel like if you can like see something like that, think about that a little bit and then like maybe educate somebody else because of it or talk to somebody else because of it. That's like a chain reaction. That's something that like is happening solely because of art. And I think this moment is prime for, um, for artwork in the street. For one, because there's more boarded up materials, right? COVID brought to light a lot of issues that were there that just became clear as day, I think. Um, and then of course the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, with the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and the marches that came to every city in this country for weeks and weeks and weeks and are still going on. Just based off of, you know, the uprisings and all of the systemic racism and white supremacy that Black people, you know, endure on all these different levels and systems, I wanted to do something to combat the weight of that. I feel like we're constantly being re-traumatized when unarmed, you know, Black men and women and children are gunned down or murdered violently within our communities. I wanted to do something that, you know, spoke to our self-worth, our mental health and well-being. The mural is re-envisioning Black power. It's also, you know, a call to action piece. Inspire Black people, inspire Black power, think big, stand for equality. Like that's a direct, that's a directive. Society does get scared of Black power. And what does that mean? For me, it means our resilience. It means, you know, our ability to be genius and creative in the most tumultuous and, you know, overwhelming, you know, conditions. The other interesting thing about street art is that because there's no curator, because there's no gallery art owner, it's really just the artist speaking directly to their audience. Um, so it's in a way one of the most democratic forms of art making. You know, the artist can put stuff up. And I've seen We Paste last months and months and months and months because no one's taking it down, no one's complaining about it. If you don't involve the community uh, and you don't uh, get a sense of what their needs and wants are, like they're not going to respect the art at all. It's not going to last. I also think it gives people a sense of pride in their neighborhood when you have art and they, uh, they see themselves reflected in it. Entanglement took uh, a lot of transformation. Uh, just trying to find someone to sponsor the mural and support it and a wall to put it on. And then it just became a passion project. At, towards the end of it, and it was just like, I just really, like 2020 has been a really significant year. And so I just really wanted to uh, claim, reclaim things that I've seen in the media and social media. Since the mural is a collage of both things that bring people joy and things that are a little bit painful, uh, I just wanted thought that maybe black and white uh, would offer this mutual playing ground. Since it was a passion project, like I just wanted to make sure I preserved it. Uh, so I like I put plexiglass over it because unfortunately you see sometimes someone will throw something at something that says Black Lives Matter. So I was like I don't 
really want to have to keep continuously repaint it. So I was like, let me just reinforce it and put some glass over it so we just wipe it away if that ever does happen, but hopefully not.